think that they're all but this question in, in, in more detail. If you look at this question, it says the graph of y was 8x squared plus dx plus c, <coughs> which is a quadratic function. Okay? It represents the derivative of f. f is the cubic function. Okay? It is, it is given that f prime of 1, now f prime of 1 equals to 0, it means the first derivative okay, of the cubic function is equal to 0 where x is equal to 1, which is a turning point. Okay? That's what this means. f prime of 1 equal to 0 means the derivative of the gradient is 0 where x is 1. f prime of 3 equal to 0. It means the first derivative is equal to 0 where x is 3. So if I were to connect this, this graph here that I have here, what that means is x is 1 here and x is 3 there. The, the values of x at the turning points are the x-intercepts of the cube of, of the quadratic function. The x values at the turning points of the cubic function are the x-intercepts of the quadratic function. Alright? Then the next statement says f prime of zero is equal to six. Now this is interesting now how you interpret it. You need to know that for the original cubic function, which looks like this, its general formula, where well, I can write it as f of x equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. When I find this f prime of x, which is equal to 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c, this f prime of x is also equal to y. That first derivative in function notation is also equal to y in terms of the quadratic function. So this means that the y value, okay, the y value, remember, when x is 0 and you are getting a y value which is 0 to 6, that's a y intercept. In other text here, you can say the first derivative is 6 if x is what? 0, which will be the y intercept. So it's more like it's this. So remember, this is the first derivative. So if I put x equal to 0, if x equal to 0, I'll be left with what? I'll be left with, with, with c, which is going to be a 6 in that case. So it means that at this point here, y is going to be 6. Okay? Remember, for a quadratic function, this c here is the y intercept. I hope you remember that. That's why I have to go over some grades. Unfortunately, I don't have all the time to go over everything from, from last year, unfortunately. But all the concepts that you did last year, you need to refresh yourself this year. And that's why you've got this volume, that's why you're not supposed to just play around wasting time. Okay, so, so you need to be aware of this. I put the information on the graph. Right, so let's answer the question now. So it's 9.1, write down the x coordinates of the stationary point of f. The x coordinate will be x equal to 1 or x equal to 3. Write down the x coordinates of the stationary point of f. The stationary points, you get them where the derivative is equal to 0. So the two values in the stationary point will be x equal to 1 and x equal to 3. I'm following that. Then the next question said, for which value or values of x is f strictly decreasing? Now, when we say strictly decreasing, it means we use the less than sign, okay? Yeah, we use this sign. Strictly decreasing means it's neither, it's, it's, it's only decreasing, okay? It cannot be zero, all right? So here, for which value of x is f strictly decreasing? Now, to get that answer, 
you need to know that if the first derivative is negative, it means the y values for the graph of the first derivative, which is quadratic, are going to be what? Negative. We want values of x for which f, f is, is not drawn, this is not f, this is f prime. This graph here is the graph of f prime of x. So don't confuse it with the cubic function. It's not, it's not f. The one that we are given here is the graph of the first derivative. So when we want the values of x for which f is strictly decreasing. Now for f to be strictly decreasing, it means that the y values of the first derivative, that is f prime, must be negative. So it means the answer is going to be between x equal to 1 and x equal to what? Why? Because this, this, this part here, let me use a different part. This part of the graph is negative. Okay? Which means the first derivative is negative. Therefore, for the graph of f, it will be strictly decreasing. Remember, for a function to be decreasing, the derivative must be negative. For the function to be decreasing, the derivative must be negative. For the function to be increasing, the derivative must be positive. So to the left of, of one, the graph, it, it has got values of y that are positive. Therefore, it's increasing. To the right of these three here, the, the, the graph has got y values that are positive. Therefore, the original cubic function is, will be an increasing function. Okay? And the other thing is, well, if I were to ask you to draw the shape of uh, the original cubic function, is it going to start with a maximum turning point or a minimum turning point? If I were to ask you to draw the original cubic function, is it going to start with a minimum? Is it going to look like this or is it going to look like that? That's <laughs> Which one? The top one or the bottom? No. <laughs> if you have a minimum turning point like this for the first derivative, okay, it means that we are dealing with a quadratic function here. For the quadratic function, if if the value of a is positive, then you have a what? Minimum turning point. If, if you are dealing with the cubic function, it means we start with the maximum. I told you last time that it is like the opposite of what you think. Okay? For the quadratic, you start with the, you have a minimum turning point. For the cubic, you start with the maximum. Okay? You start with the maximum. So it's going to look like this. And here we are going to have x equal to 1 here and x equal to 3. So you have 1 here and then you have 3 there. So the, the, the region that you are talking about or the interval is from here to there. Between x equal to 1 here and x equal to 3. So the graph will be decreasing. <coughs> and here, to the left of this point, the derivative that is positive. That, that's why we have got y values that are positive up to there. And then from, from this turning point here going that way, the y values are positive. That's why we have got a positive, uh, sorry, we have got positive y values. So the answer of 4.9.2, 4 just to summarize what answer is going to be, the answer will be 1 is less than x, is less than 3. That will be the answer. Then 9.3 now says, explain a which value of x is the stationary point of f, okay, will be a local minimum. Okay, explain for which value of x it will be the stationary point, a local minimum. A local minimum refers to a minimum shaping point, so we are talking about this point, or we are talking about that point. But already we say our graph looks like this. So when you give an explanation here, you have to give an explanation in terms of 
the value of, of A. We explain that since the first derivative has a minimum turning point, it therefore means that the original cubic graph okay, starts with the maximum what? Turning point. Therefore, the first x value, okay, the first x value at the stationary point would be x x it will be at the maximum turning point. Hence, the second value will be at the what? At the second, uh, sorry, at the uh, minimum turning point. The question that does not require a, a calculation is just what? An explanation. It's an open question. You can answer it in many ways. But you have mentioned in terms of the shape. The shape here, if you explain it in terms of the shape, it will help you a lot. So you say, since the first derivative has a minimum turning point, it therefore means that the original cubic function starts with a what? A maximum turning point. Hence, hence, the x value at the minimum turning point is going to be x equal. Okay? So you can, it's going to be x equal. So x equal 3 is going to be our local minimum because of the shape. You could also explain it in terms of, of gradient if you want. And say that to the, since the, 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 the y values of the first derivative are positive, okay, it therefore means that to the right of x equal to 3, the, the original cubic function is an increasing function, which is true. Okay, to the right of this point is it's an increasing function. So this is an open question. Okay, but the shape of, of of the graph, of the graphs rather, that is the first derivative and its original function are extremely important in giving an answer. Okay? You can decide how you want to answer, but that's how I would answer. I would say, just for the last time to emphasize this, I would say since the first derivative is a minimum turning point, it therefore means that the original cubic function it okay, starts with a maximum turning point, then a minimum turning point. Hence, the x value at the minimum turning point is x equal to what? To 3. Okay. Then, 9.4. Determine the x coordinate of the point of inflection of f. Right. Now, this one here, since we don't know the values of a, b, and c, it will be very deep. We know c, yes, but we don't know a, we don't know b. Now, you can only use the fact that the x value at this point is going to be the average of these two values. It's be the average of the x intercepts. So that x value, as I told you last time, now here it's a determined, it's only one mark, so you can write the answer. Okay? So how do you get that? Remember last time I told that you just add the two values as an x intercept. So you get 4 over 2. And the answer there will be a true. So the answer here will say x is equal to what? The two. Is the average of the values of x at the x intercept of the first derivative or the average of the x values at the turning points. So here this is where I get this formula. Just to emphasize, I get this formula x equal to x1 plus x2. I gave you this formula as the second method of finding the x value at the point of inflection. Right? Then the last one. Now, the last one, we are now talking about concavity. Right? For which values of x is f is f concave r? f here is only referring to the referring to the original cubic function. For what values of x is it concave r? Yes. X will be greater than what? Two. Two. So it means we are saying here, somewhere here, that's where we have what? Two there. That's what it means. The value of x at the point of inflection is a two. To the right of two, the graph is happy. To the left of two, the graph is what? Sad. Therefore, if it's concave, that means it's happy. So the answer will be x greater than
Are you following? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 